use them. I think one of the more powerful words in there is this line. I'd like us to say that together. Let us use them. Come on. Let us use them. Okay, can we say louder? Let us use them. Let us use them. In prophecy, let us, in proportion to our faith, in service, in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. God bless the reading of his word. I would like to invite us, let's, you know, come to the Lord's presence in prayer. We surrender our sin. Let us be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, our Bible is telling us that these are some of the spiritual gifts that can be found in the church. There are seven of them. In rare cases, there are a handful of Christians that do have these seven at the same time inside of them. Though not too many, but at least in most of us, you can have at least three or four of them manifesting inside of you. I'll say it back. There are a handful or rare people in the whole wild world, whole wild, whole wide world, world, who do have these seven at the same time in them. But we rarely can find them. I mean, not too many do have them, all of them, at the same time in them. But naturally, every single one of us, out of the seven, at least three to four of this you have. Now I would like, I would like us to check out individually where in this four you have inclinations or you feel you have inside of you. Because after God, who can tell or confirm that you really have those is you. I mean, not, not a second person, but it is you. Because, you know, the, uh, the confirmation that you really have those is coming from inside. It's not, it's not from the outside person who would say, ah, you have the gift of leadership. Then you can, you can answer back, how did you know? <laughs> because you are a stranger, how did you know? I must have known it first before you can know it. Unless the person is being moved by God. Now we go. The Bible said, prophecy is a gift. Say the word prophecy. Prophecy. Now in sometimes during our worship, what is prophecy? Somebody would hint a high tone of voice, you know, in an unknown tongues, and everyone gives the attention, and suddenly, you know, when he hits the highest of it, Start, starts to fall, I mean the, the tone of the voice, and interprets his speaking in tongues. That's what we call prophecy. One, one of the manifestations of uh, the gift of prophecy. Another is when you are being prayed for, you're being laid hands, and the, the Lord would start to speak about things to happen in the future, and uh, to warn you, or to encourage you, or to strengthen you, it's another form or another manifestation of the gift of prophecy. Hello? Amen. Personally, I noticed maybe because by God's grace, my calling is a pastor, I also do have this kind of gift. Now remember, every gift is being given by God to His child or to every Christian for edification. Say the word edification. Edification. Edification, I mentioned that a while. It is for strengthening. It is for encouragement. In other words, when somebody prophesies and it is for discouragement, it's, it's not from the Lord. When somebody prophesies and instead of you being lifted, you go home and you are hunched, you are more confused than the first when you went, I tell you that's not from the Lord. Hello, amen? amen. Because the gift is for edification, not self-gratification. It's not for the center of oneself. It is for the center or for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ with redounding strength, with redounding 
encouragement and edification for the rest of the brethren. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. Now, second is service. I still can remember what Kuya Jun did tell me. I never did mind of it until he spoke to me. Kuya Jun and his family maybe are in uh, the cemetery today because uh, all, all Souls Day today, uh, All Saints Day, All Saints Day today, perhaps after today uh, there, or after this morning, there are a lot of you who will go still to the cemetery and visit our loved ones. May the Lord bless you. Amen. It's just all right. Okay. Kuya Jun did tell me, CJ si Arba, uh, in Acts, JR is like San Pedro. Because according to him, he holds the key. Si JR, you know JR? Si you know? And you know what? Without him, we cannot have a decent church every Sunday. Why? Because he cleans the church. Obviously, in him, he must have a gift of service. Hello? Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. And you can see him. If you will go here on sun, uh, Saturday evening or Sunday morning, uh, he will take off his shirt and clean the church and see him sweating all over. And indeed, he's such a good brother helping for our Sunday worship. Such a decent one following the Amen? Amen. Praise God. And uh, today is first Sunday of uh, November. Obviously, as it is our custom, every Sunday of the month, we partake the Lord's table. Don't you know who are preparing this? We thank the Lord for the family of uh, Sister Vicky. Every first Sunday of the month, uh, for three or four years already, they have been serving this with an attitude of uh, gratefulness. I want to commend them in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Their kind, their kind of uh, sacrifice with gratitude in our communion service is what we call the gift of service. Hello, amen. 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 Physical service. The gift of teaching. Oh, you see France, how how he lives, how how he presents. You see La France. You see Lance, you see France, how they present. They have the gift of teaching. Uh, exhortation is encouragement. I see the difference between the three. See, Ayan is a good exhort exhorter. He can teach good, but he is a better exhorter. And as well, see BJ. You know, he's, he's a good exhorter. I cannot believe how these kids were this small quite six years ago, quite seven years ago, and they are now in the forefront in the ministry a while ago as we were singing our worship kanina. My tears were starting to fall and I say, and I was saying, I was telling God, thank you Lord for the second generation in our church. So another new generation coming up in our church. Except for Chester Wilde and Kuya Ayan, all the rest were actually younger ones. See, Natalie, Natalie is 17. See, Faith is still 15. Uh, see, BJ is still 16. See, uh, see, si Miko, nalala ko talaga si Miko. Miko came to the church when he, he was seven years old. He was invited by his Auntie Delia to come to church. And uh, he showed up here. And his Auntie Delia encouraged his mother, uh, he encouraged Nico to bring his mother to the church. And the whole of the family, Sister Rose would always say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not available. I'm not, because Sister Rose is a very busy uh, mother, a very busy woman. Accordingly, on that, on that Saturday, Miko did not stop to cry until his mother said yes. He was seven years old. Mama, please. <coughs> Sorry. No, it started with Sister Ochengale going to the house conducting Bible studies. And they invited Miko, and Miko came here as a church. Imagine? 
let's take how how small work we did for God and see them and they're yet but starting and uh, I don't know if Nico is still uh, feeling good about about this story or is already embarrassed because he's a grown uh, good looking young man he's now 17 year old Nico 16 or 17 oh 10 years ago that was the mother went to the house early Sunday morning pumunta po ng umaga linggo si Sister Rose ang nanay ni, ano, ni Nico sabi Sister Dels inanap si Sister Delia oh dito ka man Sister Rose si Nico ba umiyak man talaga eh bakit akala ni Sister Delia anong problema kasi daw hindi tatahan kung hindi daw magsabi na sasabay siya pagpunta dito sa simbahan so pumunta sa bahay si Sister Rose nagtanong ano oras ang simba sabay kami sa sasakyan and that's how it started later on, who followed was Jen who was yet third year college at that time and uh, later on, si Virginia Rose and see how the whole of the family today is coming and serving, uh, serving the Lord Say, say the word exhortation. Exhortation. Okay. Another is giving. Say the word giving. Giving. Um, may mga members tayo sa church. Hindi 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 pa hindi uh, nagsasalita ng marami sa simbahan. No? Sa mga silent na silent sila. But do you know our church exists because they are there helping us. The Bible said. He who has the gift of giving by generosity. Uh, I really would like to mention names, but you know, for the honor and the glory of the Lord and for God to bless them back. Uh, God knows them, and maybe some of you know them very well. They're very silent, they don't talk too much, but they will approach me and tell me, Pastor is what I am giving for the ministry. This is what I am giving for the church. This is what this is what I am giving, you know, for the work of the Lord. Acts is this strong. Our family continues to grow. Why? Because we have these people. Amen? Amen. Okay. The gift of leadership. Say the word leadership. Leadership. Uh, gift of leadership is one which is very abundant in Acts. Is it? Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Another is acts of mercy. Say the word acts of mercy. Acts of mercy. One of those that are really merciful in, in church is Brother James. Uh, okay. By the way, I, I will I will try you. If you are an emotional person, chances are you are merciful. Hello? Yung emotional ba kayo? Andali mong umiyak. Andali mong, andali mong magpakita ng emotion. I guarantee you, you must have a gift of mercy. Yung madali mong maawa. Di ba? Pero, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. Sabi ko dito, One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself but one who prophesies edifies the church hello amen, amen. dalawa ito there are two truths here two slices which uh, we find uh, talking about edifications but one speaks for uh, an inward strengthening while the other is for everyone in other words, the earlier is for oneself and the latter is for everyone. Hello? Okay. Let me ask you, have you already received the gift of tongues? Are you, did you, have you received already the baptism of the Holy Spirit? If you, if you still have not, desire for it. Pray for it. That one day and eventually you can have those. You know the apostles waited for three and a half years 
and 50 more days until they were injured by the power of God in an upper room. And when they, they were injured by the power of God, they, they started to be speaking in an unknown tongues and everyone was in confusion because they were wondering how in the world these unlearned people were beginning to speak into different tongues because you know those 120 uh, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ in the upper room were Galileans and Galileans in the past were unlearned ibig sabihin ano sila parang kulang sa pagkinagaralan nagsasalita sila ng German nagsasalita sila ng Romans nagsasalita sila ng Egyptians I mean there's so many tongues that we heard at that moment at the time and uh, it was called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, speaking in tongues is very important, you know, to our spiritual growth, personally in the Lord. Why? Because the Bible said, speaking in tongues is for the edification of yourself. Hello? Amen. I'd like to give you some examples. When, uh, when we pray, and we ran out of words what to pray. The Bible said in the book of Romans, the Holy Spirit will help our infirmities, in other words, our weaknesses, that we begin to pray in the Spirit. We agonize or we speak in tongues. Now, personally, in my experience, circumstances, exceptional circumstances, when I am caught in a situation, I ran away without hesitations, go and pray in tongues. Because I know, I right away pass into, pass into time, time and space, and the Bible said right away, I can be standing before the presence of God and claim His mercy. For example, when I become sick, I right away without hesitation speak in tongues. For example, hanong, Thursday evening until yesterday, I was down for three days in flu. And I tell you, it, it really was very bad. In the rest of my 41 years, I have a handful of flu experiences where I could account that for the three days was one of the worst. Oh my God. You know what? In those between three days, when I was in the bed, there are some times where I would just speak in tongues. Another is, when I am in my knees, and I don't know what anymore to ask and to pray to the Lord, I right away say, say my words. During my examinations, you know, when I study, and things cannot anymore, uh, cannot anymore be absorbed into my mind because of the extensive time of reading and the extensive time of memorizing, memorization, I would just right away speak in tongues. And you know what? Every time, help comes. Hello? Because the Bible said, one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Are you still there? Amen. Now look to the next person beside you. Sabihan mo daw, edifies himself. Meron pa akong mga ibang experiences, for example, magmamanayaw ako, tapos, uh, and then, uh, accidents are like few few meters away from me. For example, may may motosiklo na mag-cut, tapos na dyan sa iyong unahan, tapos you almost are to hit him because, uh, you know, his speed is less than, than your speed. You know what? I would just speak in tongues. <laughs> Naalala ko, noong 2000, 2002 or 2003, it was a holy week. Uh, we didn't have a car yet at the time. We deliver juices. Sister Delia, the children, and the rest actually was joining uh, a camp in Sambuanga, Sibugay. I was left here and uh, the reason why I was left because I was still catering some some orders of juices, and uh, we were to deliver juices at the time in Pazunanga. It was like around eight in the evening. I asked, you know, our neighbor to howl 
and to help me, to drive me to Pasunanka. What happened? The owner of this motorcycle actually admittedly telling me later on that it was his few of the first times where he drove their motorcycle. He knew how to drive, but his driving, he was a better driver on four wheels than in the motorcycle. You know what happened? Pasunanka in uh, uh, spill, uh, spillway, but that, that one. Yeah, sa motor pool. You know what happened? We met an accident. We almost hit, you know, this uh, big tree, big tree. And uh, I was thinking about Sister Delia and the children. They were not around. And we were delivering already in La Merced. I was thinking about embalming and whatever. And, uh, you know, split of seconds, you know, I was picturing of death. You see, the, the motorcycle was sliding really very fast and the driver gave up already. He said, he said no, 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 He was in panic already. And, uh, you know, the juices were on our back. You know, in split of seconds, ladies and gentlemen, the spirit of the Lord rose on me. I did nothing but just spoke in tongues. And so loud and, uh, what is this? so loud and uh, so clear that you know what happened is instead of hitting hitting the the big three the driver was able to swear it and instead we hit this uh the race of the house in front of this tree and uh there was no fatal accident that happened we we just no doubt we just uh Hindi talaga total turtle, but we we touched the ground like this, and uh, cartons of juices, 1,300 it was, you know, stuck on me, and uh, I had to ask the brother to take all of those because the the load of the juices were were on me heavy already like this, and you know what? All I had were bruises, even. When uh, we were there already at the terrace of the house, people were coming and trying to help us, and we were told on that day we were the second vehicle to hit, uh, or we were the second vehicle to make an accident or to slid away from uh, from the top to down. I mean, it, it, it was a history on that day. Something there was a spiritual that was happening on that place. At the beginning of the day, Sister Delia would really force me not to anymore go to the layers of Pasunanka anytime within the Holy Week. Oh my God. So what I did was, I just spoke in tongues. An accident was averted. Another part. How many of you experience or do feel nightmares uh, sometimes when you, when, you, when you are asleep? Nightmares. Nightmares is actually a scientific phenomenon which even up to now it still cannot be explained why does it happen. They are saying that it's something which is a uh, imbalance that happens while you are in bed, while you are while you are asleep in your spleen or in your uh, in your uh, what DJ went through last Thursday? Goal. Okay. It's something which is an imbalance in your in your gold bladder, and that is why you you go and have nightmare. I also do have some nightmares, and you know what? Funny, because it's being registered already. When I go a nightmare, I would just speak in tongues. And indeed, Sister Delia would wait there, hui, 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 hui. And then I would wake up, ah, ah. Why, why, why you are, I know, you are groaning. And then suddenly you burst in speaking in tongues. Because I am running, running away from walkers. <laughs> You know what, walkers? You watch The Walking Dead? 
I'm running from Zumbi. Okay, another is the Bible said, but one who prophesies edifies the church. We need this. There are two kinds of prophecies. Prophecy, which is an interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, which is the uh, delivery of the Word of God. Take it when Sunday happens or Sunday comes and the Word of God is spoken, it is as well a form of prophecy. Now let me tell you, when you come to church on Sunday, when the Word of God is spoken, are you strengthened or not? You are strengthened. Amen? Amen. Praise be to the living God. And you know what's funny? Because Ian is recording my sermons, posting it in the Facebook. And every time he posts it, one of the first to watch is this me. Funny because when I watch my sermon and see myself and listen to my sermon, I personally become encouraged. Why is that? Because that's not me anymore. That's not human personality already. It is the Word of God flowing through the mouth of a human vessel. The Bible said, prophecies edifies the church. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Asking those who are gifted with leadership, please, in the name of the Lord, help me to lead a small group by God's grace at least on the second week of November. At least on the second week of November. Uh, I would like to read it once again. I am asking to those that are gifted with the anointing of leadership, if we used to say, or excuse to say, no before, please this time, reply God, and reply me, yes, pastor. I would like to encourage us to restart again, and this time we'll do it better, small group. Everyone says, amen. 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 And let's do them by God's grace, by God's grace. And we're going to do them, start and initially do them on the second week of November. I'd like to iterate, ladies and gentlemen, that Sunday church is not enough to grow ourselves spiritually in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sunday, Sunday thing is not enough. You know, two hours, we start 9.30 and then worship at 10. I stand here at 10.30 uh, in the morning. I finish at 11, 11.15. It's not enough to secure for our spiritual growth. It's not enough. You know why? Because better developments happen in small groups. And when Sunday comes, everyone joins for celebration. Hello? Amen. Uh, si Kalimutan Paralan You know, I just, just had my uh, recovery this morning Si Margie! Oh, oh my God The medicine is still on me Si Margie si Margie Gale is now in Manila She will be there for 6 months training After the 6 months training she will come home, maybe spend for two to three weeks, and then go already, fly already to uh, Japan and work there as a nurse. Praise be to the living God. Now, see, Margie uh, started in church when she was 12 years old. Are you still there? Amen. Margie is now 21. Started as... Uh, 12 years old in the church. Jason brought her here in the church. And you know what? She was a kind of a shy type. And then we encouraged her. We lifted her. Of course, she would evade. But you know what? There are some youth in the church 
who showed some interest to her. But she's coming to church already all by herself without Kuya Jason. Uh, she found some friends in the church. And you know what happened? Little by little, she's starting to be coming out from her shell and she is now so on fire for God. So she even was able to, to bring the fire, you know, even to the national level when she joined the Miss Binibining uh, Pilipinas uh, last year. Oh, Miss Earth Galeno. She was able to, uh, no, last year, ba? last year or this year? Yeah. Ah, yeah, this year. She was able to bring it in Manila. And you know what? She's even intending to bring that fire in Japan by God's grace. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Why? Because she has a small group. You know, mga young professionals natin sa church, at saka mga young people, almost every day they come here in their small group. Uh, naalala ko si BJ noon, at saka si Jai. Uh, they were first year and second year. Si Brother James and Sister Olsen would come to me and tell me, Pastor, ng dalawang yan, pumupunta yan sa ibang simbahan kasi may kaklase <laughs> na ibang church. At saka, naglalaro doon ng instruments. Tapos, kinausap si Sister Delia. Sister Delia talked to me, give these boys the chance to have a break in the church. Kasi at that time, may mga players na tayo sa simbahan, you know? Yung mga unang generations that are now blessed by the Lord. So these boys were given break in the church. Eh ngayon, nagko-concentrate sa church, may isa kong kinatatakong tayo ng KBJ, which is a positive fear. I seem to see in this boy a calling of a pastor. And uh, I don't know what's ahead, but I seem to see a trace. Kasi when the Lord demands a family, you cannot say no. Hello, are you still there? Amen. Amen. Palapakan natin si God. Yung mga youth natin, on fire sila sa Panginoon. Why? Because they have their smoke. I want this fire to go and cross the border and start as well with our adults. Initially, there are three groups I already talked with and I asked them, you know, to lead their own groups. I asked Ate Vicky. I asked Helen. Helen is not around, but she has a partner. Si... Si... Ano pa alam ko? Si... Na? Asensya talaga si Sibito Pastor. Just had uh, his recovery. Ano pa alam ko? Si... Glidel. Si Glidel. Now, these, these girls are yet new in the Lord, but are on fire. And then si Kuya June for the group of uh, Brother Nono. I'm thinking of Kuya June and si Seren to partner together. You know, just, you know in uh, the small group. And, uh, and you know what? These people do have the gifts of leadership. Gaya po ni Seren. Apat na taon na itong palagi nagsans. Ano, lumalapit sa akin, sabi niya, Pastor, pag may... Uh, trabaho para sa Panginoon, sabihan mo lang ako. Then I, I have been praying for Seren. And this is the siguro the time, Seren. Seren has a new heart. Kasi uh, had, had an open heart surgery uh, four, five months, uh, seven months ago, seven, eight months ago. Praise the Lord. And that new heart, let's give that to the Lord's service, Seren. Amen? Amen. At saka si Mom Rose, they're now joining together and there's they can be serving the Lord as a husband, uh, as a husband and as a wife. I'm excited for this. Amen? Amen. And uh, what I want to see is Sister Delia also to handle her own group. Sister Delia raised to us, <laughs> you know, is smiling, raised up my three wonderful kids. Look at Aya now. Look at Malin now. And Naz. But time now for Sister Delia to have her own way. Amen. Every one of you. Do not say, I'm, I'm, I'm just like this. No. If there is this anointing, if there is this ministry, acts is, is reached of, it is the gift of leadership. Amen? Amen. Now, 
being a leader is a facilitator. Now, we will have more instructions in the coming Sundays. Anyways, I already did talk to the leaders what they will do. It's a real small group. Sister Vicky does have four members, including si, uh, si Sister Rose Mercado, si Sister Rose Watton, si Sister Erlene. Uh, sino yung pangapag yan, Sister Vicky? Or, you are the fourth. Oh, yeah. Apat lang sila. Apat yung tinatawag na small group. In a circuit, dalawa sila, Mom Rose. Tapos, si Kuya Jun, dalawa sila. Si Sheila, at saka si uh, Chiu, Sister Gina, at si Brother Nolong, walo. Si Otsing, Pastor Azo. De, ikaw, you will handle your group. At saka si Brother James. Uh, siguro, you will you will take your your auntie that uh, as one of your members, no? Because Sister Wilma, by the way, si Sister Dado Galeno, we would like to commend for her co commitment uh, to the Lord. Sister Dado has some ailments physically, and because of her love to the Lord, God is extending her life. Si Sister Dado has some heart failures. And when she climbs here at the church, she would have to do it really one at a time. Coming here as a church, climbing here at the third floor is such a sacrifice. But you know what? She's doing it because she loves the Lord. She told me, I cannot do it every Sunday really, Pastor, because, because of the toughness in going to church. I told her, Sister Williams, at least even once a month you can show up in the church. That will be an enough encouragement. Amen? Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Palapakan na natin si God. Are you excited? Amen. Oh, praise God. On Saturday, we will go to uh, Ayala to visit Galay si Sister Rose. Kasi si Ray J, nag-surgery Galay, no? Of uh, Galstone. Dalawa sana may pupunta sa, <laughs> sa Cebu. E eh, paano yan? Ako, nagka-flu. Sabi niya, ako, pastor, sasama ako. E, eh, nagka-goldstone siya. So, tumawag si Pastor Roger. Sabi niya, ganun ba? So, we were, we were excused not to be able to join the National Convention. Now, by next week, Acts will be marking how many years already. We started in 1991. I would like to take this chance uh, in behalf of my family, to say really thanks for all of the members, uh, for all that are here, and those that are around. You know, Acts is this strong, and we know there will be coming more blessings that are way ahead. Eyes have not seen, earth have not heard, and minds have not understood what the Lord was going to do to those that love Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why? Because you are there. Let's continue to help one another and strengthen, you know, the body and build the church. Amen? Amen. Palapakan na natin si Lord. If you have your Bibles, I would like us to open, to open it in. And this is the last. This is not in my slides. Genesis 24, verse 16. It reads, And he blessed Rebecca and said to her, May the Lord say this to us and bless this to us right now. Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. God bless the reading of His word. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand.